Yo, welcome back. Okay, so, so far in our application, we have two routes, the sc slash screams, which gets also the screams, and the slash post, I mean, post at slash scream, which posts one scream. Uh, since we have already implemented authentication, it would be nice to have some code here that would check uh, the authentication token that's being sent from the user to see whether this user has logged in or not because this should be a protected route. We don't want anyone posting screams to our database. They have to be logged in. Uh, that's one functionality. And the other functionality would be, we need to extract the user handle from that data and then uh, submit it into our database. So if we were to look at our database, our screams are stored having one property inside the document saying um, that's called user handle, which has the handle of the user. So we can know whose scream this is. So the way this, this is done is that whenever we post a, uh, an, a request to a protected route, we need to add a header called authorization, right? Like this. And we will have a value of bearer space and then a token right here. So it would be something like this, but of course this would be an actual token. So let's actually write code that would decode this token or like obtain this token and get data from it and then make sure that um, our request is authorized. All right, so we would actually, we could write the code right here, but since we need this functionality for multiple routes, then we need to make this into a function and then run it, uh, chain it before any request. So let's actually write this in a function and the way express works is that we can pass a second argument to um to this post or any actually any route and this argument would be a function that does something that intercepts the request and then does something depending on what the request uh, has and then decides whether to proceed towards our handler or to stop there and send a response aka a middleware a piece of middleware so let's Let's call our middleware, which we haven't created yet, FB auth for Firebase authentication. And let's create it here. So let's do const. So it's going to be a function. Const FB auth equals, and it's going to take three things. Uh, two you've already seen, the request and then the response. And the third one is called next, which is going to, uh, which is something that if we return it and call it as a function, it's going to proceed towards our handler right here. And we can chain as many pieces of middleware as we need, but in this case, we only need one. Okay, so here we have access to our request object. What we need to do is that we need to check if request, oops, no, not release, request.headers.authorization. Uh, so if this exists and we need to check. Now we don't have to do the bearer thing, but it's a convention and in multiple frameworks and other languages. And it, it's a, a good, it's a good standard, a con good convention that everyone follows that your token has to be, uh, has to start with, uh, the bearer space, um, string. So what we need to do here is we need to do another check, another condition, which is request dot headers dot authorization dot starts with which is a javascript uh, function that checks that a string starts with a certain other string and let's do bearer space now if of course uh, as it suggests if our string starts with bearer space the, and and it exists then this condition is satisfied so we'll go in here and actually we need to initialize a id token variable here. So let's do let ID token. And then here, if these are true, that means our ID token equals request dot headers dot authorization. Now remember, we need to extract it. We need to extract it because there is a, a bearer space before it. So what we need to do is we need to uh, do dot split which is a JavaScript function that splits a string by a certain other string. So if we split it by bearer space, that means it's gonna have an array of two 
uh, it's going to give us back an array of two strings. The first one is bearer space and the second one will be the left, which is the token. So let's do one. That means we want to take the, the second element, which is the token. And now that we have our token, we can proceed with our logic. But we need to do an else statement here, because if we don't have an authorization header or it doesn't start with bearer, we need to actually stop the request here and send back an error response. So let's do return response.status 403, because this is uh, an unauthorized uh, error. And uh, let's do JSON with an error that says uh, un authorized I misspelled that unauthorized cool okay um, and let's actually console log this just in case console or console error it and let's say uh, no token found all right so here if if we pass through here that means there is a token so it's not enough that there is a token, we need to actually verify that this token uh, was issued by our application and not from somewhere else. So what we need to do is that we need to do admin dot auth. And here we have a function called verify ID token. And we will pass it our ID token. ID token and this returns a promise. So we do dot then. And this promise holds an, a decoded ID token as you see here. So let's do decoded token and oops, like this and then here what we need to do is we need to um, this decoded token holds the data that is inside of our uh, token and which is going to be user data so we need to um, add this data to our request object so that when this request proceeds forward to let's say this route our request here will have extra data that we've added from this middleware in this case, it's going to be user data. So what we need to do is that request dot user equals decoded decoded token. Did I misspell that? No, it's fine. Okay, so decoded token. And we also need to get the handle because this by default doesn't have the handle because the handle is not stored in Firebase author authentication system. It's stored in our collection users. So we need to actually uh, do a, a database request. Let's do return db dot uh, collection users and we've also stored user ID uh, in our users collection so we can do where user ID equal equal oops equal equal and we already have the uh, the user in the request so we can do request dot user and this will have a property of UID. And let's actually, here, let's console log the, um, the, the decoded token just so that you see what it looks like. Okay, so now where we have this, we need to limit, let's, let's do a limit one, which, which does exactly that, limits our results to just one document. And let's run get, and then let's chain another then. <laughs> And we get data back, and because this is a a db dot collection uh, query, and we're using where, even though that we've limited it to one, this will still have a docs property, which is an array, and of course it's going to have only one element. But uh, to access it, we need to access the docs. So we need we want to add a property to our request user. So request dot user dot handle, and let's do equals data dot docs the array and then we take the first element dot data the function which extracts the data from this document dot handle i believe we have a handle i think let's check in our users yeah we have a handle property so we're getting this object and then we're getting this property and attaching it to our request dot user cool so now here, when we get here, we need to return next as a function like this, which will uh, allow the uh, request to proceed towards here. So now that we have this set up, um, actually let's handle the, the catch block because here if it verifies the token and the token and it fails at verifying it, that means this token is either expired or blacklisted or from some other issuer, if it fails, it will come here. 
and here we catch the error and we need to send the error an error an error and let's actually console error this error and let's say um, error while very fine oh boy <laughs> very how do you spell very fine <laughs> very fine token and we put uh, the error like this and let's do return response dot status again of 403 and json uh, error is already adjacent so we can just do this and then uh, okay so this is done so here now this means in this route or in any other route where we add this fb auth as a middleware if we get here by the by the time we get to this block of code, we've already been um, verified and we've already it's already been checked that we are authenticated and we have access to request.user. So what we need to do is here in user handle, we just need to do, because we have this user now, so we just need to do request.user.handle because we, we've added it to our request uh, thing. So for our, uh, post request we just need to send a body and that will be enough all right so let's actually test if all of this is working so we save and we do firebase serve okay let's copy this endpoint I think I already have it on in postman yes I do let's log in to get a token so the same data is still valid uh, Apparently it's not. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I just needed to correct the password. Okay, we get a token. Um, let's now uh, send a request to slash API slash scream. And it's still a post request. And here we have an authorization header with the value bearer. Let's actually test like a random value here so that we fail it on purpose. And our body would have a body property of body and it says uh, another scream submitted I don't know <laughs> okay let's send the request and it fails decoding firebase uh, token fails cool we get this error 403 forbidden and if we were to give the correct token so here bearer space this token that we got and we send it should be successful Cool, document something, something was created successfully. And notice we didn't even have to send the handle. And if we go to our database in screams, and if we sort them by created at descending. So this is the latest one. And there we go, we have the user handle user because that's the user we used to log in with. And uh, yeah, it's submitted and everything works cool. So we've already we've set up our uh, authentication middleware. So whenever we have any protected route, we just need to add this. And there's your decoded token. It's got some token metadata like uh, the user ID, uh, the expiry time, the email, uh, and any other user extra data that you would add. Cool. All right. So this is it for this video. In the next one, we will start to actually form, um, refactor this code because it's kind of messy right now and everything is in one file. So yeah, look forward to that. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.